This week we're back in Johnstown. With the availability of wood and bark, Johnstown became a center for tanning of leather during the late 1800s. In the early 1900s, Johnstown and nearby Gloversville became known as the glove capital of the world. Today, the tradition of leatherworking continues at Townsend Leather. Founded in 1969, this company is a hands-on manufacturer of custom upholstery leather. Leather designed and created here at Townsend Leather has traveled around the world literally in planes owned by Steven Spielberg, John Travolta, and Harrison Ford, and beyond that, America's Air Force One. My dad started in 1969, uh, basically started uh, a family business, mother, father, and five children. But Johnstown and Gloversville are leather making areas that go back probably well over 100 years. Started with the glove making industry back in the 1800s. Um, as the glove industry moved offshore in the 1950s, the industry converted over to garment leathers at that time. Well, Townsend's known for making beautifully soft uh, upholstery leathers, very decorative leathers. And I think as you tour today, you see some of the, the fancier embossed gaufrage, hand tipped leathers. So we're recognized as being more creative, more design driven in what we do. Our core business is corporate aircraft, VIP aircraft, uh, higher end residential, hospitality, so hotels around the world, uh, motor coaches, yachts, uh, so higher end decorative markets. Well, we have about 150 employees. Uh, we bring in semi-processed hides primarily from Europe. So we do the coloring on the leather as it, as it is received. Um, we do uh, various uh, finishes finish treatments, embossings, um, different grains, textures, designs, embossed and engraved into the leather. And then we do various hand finishes, uh, highlighting color, texture, and design. Uh, I, it's been about 40 years for me. So uh, it's, been, it's been interesting to the extent that it's, it's recreating yourself and your company year after year. And it seems like that window of recreation is shorter all the time. Um, but I think what keeps me into it now more than anything else is that it continues to be a family business. The third generation is now involved, so two of my three daughters and their husbands are involved with the business. So that's it. It's that excitement of, uh, of, of family uh, involvement. It's, and then it's the excitement about creating new products, new things. And it, it's just, it's very interesting and stimulating to, to create a product, put it out in the marketplace, and, and see a response to it. Lord knows I don't have a lot But you can have what I've got And sometimes I'm prone to believe All that I ever had was you And though I long to stay in my easy chair Located at one colonial court is a pretty little church that now houses one of New York State's oldest community theaters, the Colonial Little Theater. In 1938, the Colonial Little Theater Company was founded. They didn't have a home back then, but uh, years later when this church became available, they moved into this building, but the building itself had to be moved first. It was moved a whole block to where it is presently located. And coming in here is so much like being in New Hartford on Oxford Road because it's just like Players Theater, the old Players Theater, the feeling, the size, the, uh, the smell. I hate to use that word, but the smell. And uh, it has the same feeling of presenting new entertainment in a historic setting. This production is called Almost Heaven, John Denver's America. It was written by a man named Harold Thau. It was originally on Broadway back in 2006, I believe, and the opportunity presented itself a couple of years ago. One of our, my fellow board of directors members brought it to the board and thought it would be a great way to open up our demographic to people who not only enjoy music, but who enjoy country music. And John Denver had a tremendous following during his career, and it has proved to be a pretty big spark for us. 
Um, there's five people that are involved in performing. We have banjos, guitars, and a keyboard. It's all live music. It's very family oriented and it opens up in just two weeks. Tickets are now on sale for the musical biography, Almost Heaven, John Denver's America, performed over the next two weekends at the Colonial Little Theater. Call 518-762-4325. Miss Johnstown Diner is a Johnstown staple. Hungry for pancakes at 2 a.m. or a burger at 4 a.m.? This diner serves breakfast or anything off the menu, day or night. This is a real classic diner. We're open 24-7, 24, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All year round? All year round. And what do people come here for most? Macaroni, salad, and gravy. Really? Yes. And why, why, why do you think that's so popular? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know where it it's good. I don't know where it started. No. It's just a Johnstown no. thing. It's just a Johnstown thing. When you're here, try the mac and gravy. It is the trademark of Johnstown. And I'm telling you, it is going to live up to all of your expectations. It is absolutely incredible. You'll come back again and again for some more. When you leave here, you're not going to leave hungry. Be sure, though, to leave enough space for dessert because the pies are all homemade as well as a lot of other things. And take a look at the counter at the uh, place where you put your feet. You can see that the slate has been worn down, they say, by, by millions of customers. I'm gonna blow some dust on down the highway Over the town no return I'm gonna make my name The headlight of Sundance And I got no more riddles left to burn And don't look for me in the morning Don't cry my name out in your sleep Don't ring the phone and my job in the street. One of Johnstown's newest manufacturers is Faye Yogurt, celebrating its first anniversary in Johnstown next month. Faye Yogurt began in 1926 as a small dairy in Greece and grew to become Greece's biggest dairy company. The company's unique process, including their live active yogurt cultures and the removal of the watery whey, give the yogurt its characteristically thick, creamy texture. Its popularity spread throughout Europe and to the United States. In 2008, a brand new $85 million state-of-the-art plant was built here in Johnstown. As you can imagine, when you have an increased demand, you cannot cover this demand by shipping the product all the way from Greece to the United States. So that was uh, the, the obvious reason that we, we did the plant. At the same time, we find out that this country uh, needs more quality products in, uh, in the food industry. And uh, our company is based, our strategy is based on quality. And we have two very good reasons to come up here. Uh, the very important one is the milk is a milk producing area and the second uh, quite important for us because of our uh, unique process production process is the disposal of the whey so there's a whey uh, 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 a treatment plant here in Johnstown and we dispose all the whey that uh, we're producing out of the production process of yoga <music> Traveling round 